each and every real time entity uh, will represent as a class will represent here right in case of object oriented program let's take for example i'm taking a class i'm taking here called mobile is a class i'm taking here i'm taking a class i'm taking what is a class name mobile is a class i'm taking here what is the class name mobile is a class if you take each and every class describes about data and behavior let's say in case of mobile in case of mobile what is the data in the mobile if you take each and every real time entity will represent as a class just for demonstrating about this class i'm taking an example called mobile can i know what is the data in this mobile it just describes about the data and behavior class okay first thing is let, let's take for example brand name be okay, good brand name next what is a screen size correct or not what is the price of the device what is the cost what is the cost of the device let's take cost what is the screen width and what is the screen height screen width and height so instead of screen size i'm specifying here okay this is about the entire screen width and height this is the resolution what is the resolution width and height okay any other things like what is a camera what is the camera capacity that 13 pixels or 15 15 pixels the camera pixel capacity any other things so this all comes under data basically this all comes under what data brand name screen size cost width height camera so this all comes under what data this all comes under what data okay the class describes about only two things one is what one is data one more thing is nothing but behavior one more thing is what behavior let's see here let's see here in this in this mobile what is the behavior in the mobile what is the behavior in the mobile yeah we can use for communication purpose clock calculator Engine, come on. Okay. Let's see here. What are the behaviors? What, what is the behavior in the mobile? Basically, the data we can measure, but behavior we cannot measure. Let's say, for example, by using phone, what we can do? We can talk with the other person. We can talk, correct or not? We can talk with the other person. We can we can talk through phone. We can talk next. Yeah, we can play game. We can play. Let's say play is a behavior. We can play games. We can play in the device. Talk play okay and next listen you can let's say we can listen the audio files you can listen next any other things we can send sms you can send we can send an sms you can send we can record audio we can record we can record audio we can record we can record video we can record this all comes under behaviors this all comes under what behavior talk play listen send sms record audio send uh, record video so this all comes under what this all comes under behaviors this is all comes under what behaviors so like this if you take any real time entity if you take any real time entity if you take you can represent as a class you can represent any real time entity you can represent as a class the class describes about the data and behavior class describes about what the data and behavior it just describes it doesn't contain the data and behavior but originally who contains data and behavior for example now i have a mobile phone my mobile phone is one object my mobile phone is one object my phone is an object for what mobile phone my phone is an object for this mobile phone let's say for example i'm giving a name for this one as mahesh phone my phone is the object for this mobile let's say for example uh, you know my phone is brand name is nothing but samsung it is 5.1 inches screen its cost is around uh, 16000 what is the width it's around 540 is the screen width 960 resolution is screen height 
camera pixel is 5 megapixel is a camera like this is my phone this is my phone data like this in my phone behavior i can talk i can play i can listen i can send sms i can play so these kind of operations i can perform in my phone like that your phone your phone is also one object your phone is also an object for class your phone is having some data and as well some behavior let's say in the same way some other person is also will have other person is also having some device so his phone is also an example for an object for the class for mobile okay like if you take any real time entity you can you can you can represent as a class a class describes about the data and behavior but originally the class doesn't contain the data and behavior who contains the data and behavior object object contains the data and behavior okay now here got it right got it. you got the clarity right what exactly data and what is behavior and all now the same thing now the same thing will represent the programmatically will represent the same thing will represent programmatically okay so theoretically we understand now each and every real time entity represent as a class which contains data and behavior okay now here programmatically we represent that one the same thing we represent programmatically Just two minutes, it's loading the windows. So opening this edit plus and opening here. Edit plus is an IDE. You can use this edit plus you can use for writing your Java programs or you can use notepad also you can use. There is an IDE called edit plus is a text editor. You can write the programs in this edit plus you can write or you can use notepad also you can write for writing the programs. Okay. I opened edit plus I opened and I'm selecting here go to file. If you want you can directly can choose Java option you can choose or otherwise you can choose this normal text also you can choose. You can choose either Java you can choose or normal text also you can choose. I'm selecting this Java I'm selecting here. I selected what? Java I selected. See once if you select that Java, once if you select, once if you select that Java, once if you select, uh, we got this a class we got, it's asking what is a class name. And execution of the Java program is going to start with the main method. We discussed, right? Java is a superset of C programming language. Java is what it's a, it's a superset of C, meaning whatever the whatever the grammar rules you learn in the C programming language, I mean, what are the concepts you learn in the C programming language? So those concepts, even you'll get, you'll get in the Java also, you'll get those concepts. Okay. There is a class. Let's specify what is a class name. I'm specifying the class name as mobile is a class name I'm specifying. I'm creating a class I'm creating. What is a class name? Mobile is a class name I specified. Class, mobile is a class name I specified. Okay, so you know after I'm creating a class, I'm getting what is a class name? Mobile is a class name I specified. You don't worry about the syntax. We'll discuss about each and every statement what we what we return here. But as of now, what we'll do is just install this Edit Plus software. Go to File, choose an option called New option. You'll find option called Java. Let's choose Java. You'll get the code you'll get here, the default code you'll, you're going to get like this. The default code you'll get like this. And it's asking you to specify the class name and specifying the class name as a mobile is a class name I specified. Okay, next, for compiling this program, for compiling and run the program, whatever the name you specified here, whatever the name you specified for your class, we had to specify the program also, we had to specify with the same name. Let's see here, go to file, You'll find an option called. You'll find an option called save option. You'll find here save. Go to file save. Choose a location here in your system where you want to save that file. Let's choose a location. I'm setting in the C drive. In in my computer C drive, I'm creating a 
in my computer C drive, I'm creating a folder I'm creating now here called 9 p.m. online. I get a folder I created in my computer C drive. What is the folder name? 9 p.m. online is a folder. In this folder, I'm saving a file I'm saving with the name called mobile.java is a name. See, mobile I specified, and in the bottom, automatically, uh, it's going to save the extension with .java extension. It'll save automatically. If you're using this edit plus, and you taken as a Java, you taken first initial, it's going to save the file with the name called .java extension automatically. I specified this mahesh.java. Click on save. Click on save. So we created a Java class. We created what is a class name? Mobile is a class. Mobile is what? The class. Okay. So as per our understanding from the last couple of classes, as per our understanding from the last couple of classes, a class contains what? The data and behavior. Okay, we created a class we created now. What is the class name we configured? We created a class we created now. What is the class name we configured? Mobile is a class name we configured. Mobile is a class name we configured. Okay, each and every class contains the data and behavior. Each and every class contains what? The data and behavior. Data of a class will be represented by using the data types. Data of a class will be represented by using what? Data type, data of a class will be represented. Data of a class will be represented by using what? By using data type, the data, data of a class will be represented. By using which concept? So each and every class contains these two things. We repeated a lot of times, I repeated just, but you'll remember, lifelong you'll remember that. Okay. So a class describes about what? These two things, data and behavior. Practicing this data and behavior, what do we have to create? We had to create a object had to create to access the data and behavior but i'm telling right if you know these four concepts you know java programming language what is class data object and behavior okay now initially we'll talk about this data part first we'll talk about the data part then after that we'll talk about the behavior part hello then we'll discuss about hello mahesh could you please tell me about the object okay let's initially discuss on this data part Data of a class will be defined by using the data types. Data of a class, each and every class contains this data and behavior. Data of a class will be defined by using data types. If you want to mention here, data of a class, data of a class will be defined, defined by using, by using data types data of a class will be defined by using what data types total there are two types of data types are there total, how many types of data types are there there are two types of data types are there one is a primitive data type second thing is a reference data type okay. so now we are slowly we are discussing about these data types now how many types of data types data of a class will be represented by using what data type Data of a class will be represented by using data type. So mainly there are two types of data types are there. Mainly there are two types of data types are there. One is a primitive type. Another thing is a reference type. One is what? A primitive type. And second thing is a reference type. One is a primitive type. Second thing is what? A reference type. A primitive type and reference type. Again in primitive type, there are two types of data types are there again. Again in primitive type, there are what? How many types of data types are there? Two types of data types are there. Again in the primitive type. One is a numeric type and second thing is a non-numeric type. One is what? The numeric one is a numeric type and second another thing is non-numeric type.
one is a numeric type and second thing is what non numeric type so these are the two types of two types are available numeric type and second thing is what non numeric type numeric type and non numeric type okay again in numeric again in numeric these are the data types are available again in numeric the, these types are available one is int is one thing again in the numeric these are the types are available one is byte one is what the byte next thing is nothing but short byte short let's say int byte short int and long if you have a space uh, i mean just will each and every each and every data type will allocate occupy some space also we'll mention the size also i'll mention we'll discuss about this one it is going to occupy one byte of space will be occupied how much one byte of space will be occupied for this byte short will allocate how many bytes two bytes of space will be allocated for short integer type will allocate four bytes of space will be allocated for inter for long type it will allocate eight bytes of space will be allocated for long type eight bytes okay in numeric in numeric these are the types are available byte inter short and long there are two more types are there in. this is only for holding the numbers you cannot hold the decimal values i mean the point values you cannot you cannot hold in these data types already configured the four types already configured in numeric type there are two more there are two more things are there one is the float is one thing one is the float type is one thing the float will allocate how many bytes four bytes of space will be allocated for for float and what is the last one double double will allocate occupy how much of space eight bytes of space will be all eight bytes of space will be allocated for double eight bytes of space will be allocated for what for double eight bytes of space will be allocated okay so numeric type byte short int long float and double these are the numeric types the non numeric type the non numeric types are one is one is character character is one thing see here character we can hold only one character can hold we can hold only one character can hold and the next thing is nothing but for character how much space will allocate for character it's going to allocate two bytes of space will be allocated for character how much two bytes of space will be allocated for character and another type is another type is nothing but boolean is another type boolean is another type it's going to occupy one bit there is no complete clarity about this but majority of the people will say it's going to occupy one bit of space will be occupied for boolean for boolean it's going to occupy one bit not byte one bit okay and the next thing is nothing but the void is another type void means nothing but empty it doesn't contain for example if you want to represent it doesn't contain any value then we'll represent that one by using what void will represent it's an empty there is no any size for this one also so these are the primitive types data of a class will be represent by using the data types so using what data types there are two types of data types are there primitive type and reference type again in primitive these are the types are available in reference reference type means nothing but you are going to get some built in classes you are going to get like for example uh, string string is a class in java it's a reference type next array is also a reference type in java array okay so we'll discuss more about this reference part but as of now let's focus on the primitive type primitive type of data types just there are two types are there primitive and reference these are the primitive type data types and these are what the reference type like this you can give n number of examples for reference this for sample i given two things array and uh, a string belongs to what reference type okay what is all these things was one byte two byte four bytes what are all these things i told you right uh, the data of a class 
data of a class will be defined by using the data types data of a class will be defined by using what data types and we know that internally internally in the computer internally in the computer ultimately the data is going to be stored in a binary format Ultimately, the data is going to be stored in the computer in a binary format. The data will be stored binary in the sense zeros and ones. Binary in the sense, in, in the format zeros and ones, it is going to store the data into into your computer, right? Okay. Let's take as per our understanding, we we are creating a class. We are creating here. We are creating a class. We are creating. What is the class name? Mobile is a class name. We are creating a class. We are creating. What is the class name? Mobile is a class name. We specified. In this mobile class, we want to hold some data. We want to hold. Okay, let's keep aside this brand name. We'll discuss about the string part. We'll discuss later. And what is the screen size? Screen size in the sense basically, basically, what is the screen size you are going to get? Maximum. What is the screen? I mean, like how we are going to get the value screen size in the sense? Like we are going to get like five point one, five point five, four point zero. Correct or not? These kind of values you are going to get. The first thing is nothing but screen size. The screen size in the sense nothing but you will get a requirement of holding these kind of values like five point one or six point one. You know these kind of values you will get a requirement of holding. For holding these kind of values, which type you have to use here? We are having these types, right? The decimal values you are going to get. So byte, int, short, long. These type of these many data types are there. For holding the decimal value, what type of value you want to hold here? And what what type of data we had to use here? We had to use a data, data type called what? Float type we had to use. So in our program, we get a class we created called mobile is a class we created. Mobile is a class we created. And what type of data you want to hold in your application? Based on that, we had to choose a type we had to, we want to choose. I removed this uh, statement system dot out dot tell by default we got this statement we got I removed this statement as of now as of now I removed the statement and execution of a program is going to start with main method that's why I kept the main method like this and I kept the main method so inside the main method inside the main method I'm writing the logic I'm writing here okay we decided we want to hold a decimal value you want to hold we want to hold a decimal value you want to hold so for holding a decimal value again here there are two things are there one is the float and double again for holding the decimal value there are two types are there again one is let's say after this point you have four, four or five values you I mean after this after this dot you have a requirement of holding some four or five car five digits let's say for example the value is like this the value is 17.22 like that if the value is like this, you can go for float concept. You can use no issue. But if the value is like this, for example, latitude. Latitude means nothing but you are going to get like this. You are going to get 17 points, 77, 55, 66, like that. There is a latitude value is there. Meaning after this point, there is a huge, there is a huge number is there. Correct or not? But this type of data float is not suitable. But this kind of large decimal values, we had to use a type called double type. We had to use. Okay. So our requirement is the screen size is not you will not get that much of large digit you will not get so you are going to get a number you are going to get after this point maybe one or two digits you will get okay so here so here we decided as per our understanding we are, we want to hold a decimal value you want to hold and for holding the decimal value it's not a large decimal value it's a, it's a after point you are going to get one or two values we decided to use a type called what float okay. Where you have to write this float inside the main method. As of now, let's take inside the main method, write this float. Simply, I specified float, I specified. Come on, boss, I specified if you use float in the sense nothing but it's going to allocate four bytes of space will be allocated. It's going to how much space? Four bytes of space will be allocated. Where it is going to allocate that four bytes of space? Where it's going to allocate that four bytes of space? Come on, where, imagine as per your experience, just think where it's going to allocate that four bytes of space.
Okay, so we decided to use a pipe. We decided to use either float or double. We decided to use a pipe. Now here, we can declare that float type. We can declare. We can declare that float type. We can declare either within the method, either within the inside this main method. You can declare or outside the main method also. You can declare within the main method. You can declare or outside the main method also. You can declare. As of now, I am declaring this method. I am declaring. I mean, I'm declaring this variable. I'm declaring inside the method. I'm declaring the variable inside the method. I'm declaring the variable. I'm declaring inside the method. Let's try to understand who is going to compile your who is going to run your Java program. Who is going to run your Java program? Come on, who is going to run your Java program? Compiler is going to just compile whether you followed the rules of Java or not. JVM. Who is going to run the program? JVM is going to run the program. Let's see here. This is what the JVM architecture. I'll show you the JVM architecture. I'll show you here. Meaning, I told you in the notes I specified here. If you declare the float type, if you specify here, it's going to allocate four bytes of space will be allocated. Correct or not? That's what my mention here. Float will allocate four bytes of space will be allocated for float. Where this four bytes of space will be allocated, that's what I'm trying to explain. Okay, so where this float will create is where this float four bytes of space will be created is in the JVM. Ultimately, your JVM is going to run your Java program. JVM is going to run your Java program. So I'm trying to show you once again. Ultimately, JVM is going to run your Java program. I'll show you the JVM architecture now. I'll show you the JVM architecture. I'll show you. Okay. So we'll discuss about this the architecture, complete architecture. We'll discuss. As of now, just remember, if you want, you can take a snapshot of this one in your phones. So for your further reference, later I'll explain you about this complete architecture. I'll explain you later. As of now, if you want, you can take a screenshot or you can take a photo of this one, the JVM architecture. No problem. So I hope you've taken a screenshot or a picture, right? Okay. This is a JVM architecture. In this JVM architecture, if you see here, the second part on the right side, which JVM is going to run your program in three phases, class loader, memory unit, and execution engine. By, by using these three phases, your program will be executed. Class loader, memory unit, and execution engine. See here in the memory unit, see here in the memory unit, there are some different memory units are there. Stream pool memory, constant pool memory, thread pool memory, method area, stack area. Like this, there are a lot of memory units are there. A lot of memory units are there. Okay. Now here, okay, where these four bytes of space will be created is where these four bytes of space will be created for this float is nothing but uh, in JVM, in JVM architecture, one of the memory unit in this JVM architecture is nothing but stack. What is that one? What is the memory unit? Stack. Stack is a memory unit. So it's going to allocate that four bytes of space will be allocated in the stack. Okay. So just I'm removing this one. Just one second. So each and every method, each and every method in your Java program first is going to be loaded into the stack frame. So you created that variable you created inside this main method you created that you, you created you created that float you are creating inside that particular method you are creating. If you create if you are creating this float type inside the method, inside the method, so each and every method is going to be loaded into the JVM. Okay. So JVM is one of the memory unit in the JVM, one of the memory unit in the, unit in the JVM is nothing but one of the unit in the JVM is nothing but memory 
unit. Memory unit is one of the unit in the JP. This is memory unit. In this memory unit, each and every method, main is also one method, correct or not? Main is also one method. Each and every memory unit, JVM memory unit, each and every method is going to be loaded into the stack frame. One of the memory unit, one of the memory unit is nothing but stack. Stack is one of the memory unit in the JVM. What is this one? It's a stack. This particular memory unit is called as what? It's a stack. So each and every method is going to be loaded into the stack frame. Each and every method is going to be loaded into what? Into stack frame. As of now, we created one method. We created what is the method name? Main method. Correct or not? Main is also a method, right? We are creating this float type. We are creating under the main method. We are creating this float type. We are creating this a float type. We are creating under this main method. We are creating. So main method is also going to be loaded into the stack frame. When you run the Java program, when you run, JVM is going to call this memory unit. In this memory unit, one of the memory unit called what? Stack. In this stack memory unit, the main method is going to be loaded here. Each and every method execution is going to be loaded into the stack frame. It's going to be loaded into the stack frame. What is the method name? Main. Main is a method. It is going to be loaded into the stack frame. It's going to be loaded. For each and each and every method is going to be loaded into the stack frame. Each and every method will be loaded. Now inside this inside this main frame, so we call it as it's a frame. Each and every method is going to be loaded into what into stack frame. What we call? This is called as what it's a frame. We call each and every method we call as a frame. Now here, when you run the program by default, execution of a program is going to be start with main method. So the main method is going to be loaded into the stack frame. So we are creating a variable. We are, we are creating a float type. We are creating under the main method, meaning it is going to allocate four bytes of space. Will be allocated into. It is going to allocate the four bytes of space. Will be allocated in the JVM stack. Okay, so it's going to allocate the four bytes of space. Will be allocated into the stack. Frame. Let's assume that. Uh, four bytes. Four bytes. Four bytes means how much? How many bits? Thirty-two bits. Correct or not? Meaning the thirty-two bits it's going to be stored. Meaning value is going to be converted into zeros and ones format. Value will be converted into zeros and ones format. That zeros and ones is going to be stored in this storage location. The value will be stored. Like this, we will get up to what? Up to how much? Thirty-two bit. Thirty-two bits. Okay. So now here, meaning a 32 bit, 32 bit of storage location is going to be created into this stack frame. 32 bit is going to be, I mean, where this JVM is going to be executed is nothing but it's going to be executed into the RAM. Your computer RAM, this JVM will execute. Where will, where will, where will execute the program? RAM. Computer will have that RAM, right? Okay. So if you create, if you create, if you are creating a type, if you are creating inside the method, if you are creating a type, if you are creating inside the method, if you are creating the type, so that method is going to be loaded into the stack frame. Inside that stack frame, it's going to allocate the size will be allocated. A 32 bit size will be allocated inside this stack frame. Like that, for example, one more type is also created. One more float type is also created. For example, assume that. Like this, you created one more float type. You created here. You created one more float type. You created here. Assume that you created one more float type. You created here. You created what? One more float type. You created here. Once again, assume that you created what? One more float type you created here. One more float type you created. Now, how many float types are there? There are two things are there. Now, you want to store the value into which one? 
which one you want to store the values in the first one you want to store the value or in the second one you want to store the value where you want to store this value because there are two float types are there inside this main frame where you want to store the value inside this first one or second one how will you specify that one how will you specify that into into first first float you want to store or in a second float you want to store that's why we will configure the names we'll configure boss this first type float type is nothing but i'm configuring this one as yes one for example or f1 f1 for this one okay or let's say for the second float type the second float type i'm configuring as for example f2 is a name i'm configuring okay inside the single method you can create n number of n number of float types you can create like this so later you are going to get some conflicts and you don't you, you'll get a confusion like into which value is storing the value that's why we'll configure the name we'll configure for the storage location where it is creating the allocating the space we are going to configure a name we'll configure the for that one we'll configure what a name we'll configure that is called as variable that is called as what variable we'll call so definition of variable means nothing but the definition of variable means nothing but the definition of variable means nothing but what name of the location name of the location where the data is stored the name of the location where the data is stored as called call as what variable i'm repeating again name of the location where the data is stored is called as what variable see for example here you specified type you specified for example float when you specify the float just if you specify float it's going to when you specify the type as float if you specify it's going to create the space will be created in the in the main frame it's going to create a it's going to it's going to allocate some size is going size is going to be allocated in the main frame correct or not but if you, if you don't configure the name then it's very difficult for you to store the data into the particular storage location or if you want to retrieve the data from the particular location it's very difficult that's why we will configure the name we'll configure for that particular location let's say i want to configure the name i want to configure for this particular location i will configure as screen size is a name i'll configure understand here what i'm telling so float means nothing but float means nothing but it is going to allocate it's going to allocate what a four bytes of space will be allocated if you are declaring inside the method if you are declaring inside the method the memory is going to be loaded into the stack frame memory is going to be loaded okay we are giving a name for the storage location we are giving a name for the storage location what are the name we are giving screen size is the name we are configuring this is called as a variable the name of the location where the data is storing this is called as what a variable okay how will define that one we'll see now see how the how the variable we can specify is in our program we specified public static void main string of args we'll discuss about the syntax we are declaring a float type we are declaring inside this main method i specified float we know that it's going to occupy four bytes of space will be occupied what is the name for this four bytes of space you have to configure here the name of a name the name for that four bytes of space is nothing but i configure i'm configuring as screen size is the name i'm configuring what is the name i'm configuring screen size is a name i am configuring is equals to what is the screen size i configure the screen size as 5.1 is a screen size i configure meaning in this storage location in our example in our example we are giving a name we are giving for this four bytes of space what is the name we are configuring screen size is a name we are configuring what is the value we are storing here 5.1 is a value that 5.1 we are converting into that 5.1 we are converting into the binary type we are converting i mean zeros and ones format we are converting that zeros and ones data is going to be stored into the storage location it's going to be stored into the storage location but directly you cannot access the storage location that's why we given a name we given for this storage location what is the name we configured screen size is a name we configured we called as a variable the name of the location where the data is what stored so in this storage location i'm storing a value i'm storing what is the value i stored 5.1 is a value i stored what is the value i stored 5.1 is a value i stored let's save the program let's save the program 
you remember right whatever the name you specified for your class whatever the name you specified for your class with the same name you had to create the java file you had to create with the same name okay i stored this java class i stored in the c drive a 9 pm online folder 9 pm online folder i'm storing i'm storing a file with the name called mahesh oh, sorry mobile.java is a file now observe here observe here go to the command prompt if you type cmd if you type in your system look in the command prompt will be open look in the command prompt now the path is located in the c drive in c drive users folder mahesh is a folder now the path is available in this location the path is available c drive users mahesh folder but where we saved that java file we saved that java file we saved in the java 9 pm online folder i saved the java file i saved so first we have to exit from this mahesh you have to exit when you when you write this cd double dot when you write this cd double dot it will exit from the mahesh folder meaning now we are in a users folder again when you write cd double dot it's going to exit from user folder also it will exit double dot in the sense nothing but the previous folder the previous folder. now we are inside we are inside which folder c drive we are available right now we saved the java file we saved with the folder inside this folder called 9 pm online folder we saved the java file if you want to move to that particular folder if you want to move write cd space cd space specify the java file name what is the java file name i mean what is the folder name where where you fold where you saved the java file you had to specify the folder name is specified 9 pm online is a folder name i, I configured 9 pm online is a folder name i configured let's move to the particular location so now we configured c colon slash 9 pm online meaning we are in a we are in a c drive 9 pm online folder here we saved a java file we saved with the name called mobile.java let's compile it java c how you are come how you how you will compile your java program is we'll write java c specify the class name the class name i'm specifying here as mobile.java is a class we are saving the class we are saving with the name called what mobile.java is a class we saved that we saved the file we saved with the name called mobile.java so while you are compiling you had to specify the java name you had to specify file name click on enter you are going to get one error you are going to get you're going to get what one error a successful start we're starting with error it's a good start uh, see what is a what is error because nowadays writing the program writing the program is not a good deal it's not a great deal even google also can copy paste from google also can copy paste but resolving the errors is a challenging thing okay so we got the error we got let's see what is the error we got incompatible types incompatible types possible lossy conversion from double to float why we got the error is there any error in our code what you written no, right. We are not written any great logic also. We are not written here. Simply we created a Java class. We created a called mobile is a class. Which contains a main method. And we are declaring a float variable. We declared. Even we are not printing anything also. We are not printing here. Just we declared a float value. We got there. We got the exception we got. Can I know why we got the exception? Anyone can, can know why, why we got the exception? I'm asking why we got the exception. Need to type cash because it's a very high level thing. Okay, because the space you allocated is different for double and float because the space allocated is maybe double, but uh, you declared float here. Yeah. So here, the reason is nothing but in case of your C programming language, in case of your C programming language, directly you can configure the float type. You can specify like this, you can specify. But here, in case of Java programming language, in case of Java programming language, if you specify any decimal value, if you specify, it will consider as a double type, not as a float type. If you specify any decimal value, if you specify, it will consider as a double type, not as a float type. Okay. If you want to, if you want to specify this one as a float type, after this value, we have to specify F, we have to specify. This is one change from Java. Okay. 
So if you specify any decim decimal type to be specified here, it will consider as a double type, not as by default as a float type. That's why explicitly we had to specify it is a float value, not a double value. Explicitly we had to specify it's a float value, not a double value by using a by using this f character. After your decimal value, just use this f. Now say the program. Now say the program and run the program. Will not get any issue. Will not get Java C mobile dot Java Java. Okay, we, we, are, we are not we are not printing anything. But you can, if you want, you can compile here. But we are not printing anything. We are not printing. First, we compile it. Java C space specify your class name dot Java to compile the code. To compile the code. Once your Java code is compiled successfully, you are going to get. For example, this is what the folder we saved, right? In this folder we saved Java or 9 pm Java online is a folder. See, earlier we saved only this dot Java file only we saved, mobile.java. But once your program is compiled successfully, once your program is compiled successfully, you're going to get a file called what? Dot class file. We got as we called as Java bytecode. We call we called as Java bytecode. So to run this Java bytecode only, we required this. GVM is required meaning when you write this Java space mobile but the first thing for compiling your Java code JVM is not required or JRE is not required only JDK is sufficient for compiling that code but to run the program to run the program whatever the statement you are writing Java space mobile to run this program we required what class file JRE is required huh. not class file only okay. and to run the Java program we required this JRE is required to run Java. Okay, so click on enter Java mobile. Of course, we are not printing anything here, that's why we have not got any value. We are not got. Okay, so this is our first program. So, first, okay. now here we specified if you declare the variable, if you declare it, if you so okay, we, we understand you understand right what is in the variable, the name of the location where the data is what stored that is called as what the variable. There are three types of variables are there. The three types of variables are nothing but one is the local variable. There are three types of variables. One is the local variable. Second thing is nothing but instance variable. Second thing is what? Instance variable. Third thing is nothing but static variable. There are three types of variables are there. One is local variable. Second thing is instance variable. Third thing is what? Static variable. So now, okay, we created, we created one variable, we created, we created, we created a float type, we created, and we given a, we given a name, we given for this one. What is the name we configured? Screen size is the name we configured. So it's a, what kind of variable it is? Can you tell me what kind of variable? It's a local variable or instance or static? It's a local variable. Local variable. And when you call this one as a local variable? If you uh, declare it inside a method or a function, so if we create, if we create a variable, if we create a variable uh, within within a block. If we create a variable within a block, so here it may, be, it may be a method or it may be a constructor. It may be a method or it may be what? It may be a constructor. It may be a block. So instance block. Okay, then it's called as what? If you create a variable within a within a method or a constructor or block, it is called as what? Then it is called as then it is called as local variable. Then it is called as what? Local variable. Fine. Next, we'll try to understand a few more things about this local variable. In our example, we are talking about this mobile, right? Mobile, uh, mobile is having some data. We are we are trying to store that mobile data. We are trying to store in the program. Okay. But can you know any other thing? Okay. Screen size we saved. What is other other data in the mobile phone? Other data is a mobile phone. Let's take for example, uh, pixel. Let's take. Any other things? Pixel. Any other thing? Memory. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, memory. 
let's take memory memory in the sense nothing but memory you will get hardly either let's start from 5 to lmb 5 to lmb 1 gb 2 gb 4 gb 8 gb 16 gb 32 or 64 or 128 or 256 correct or not the vast yes. range is nothing but this one okay you want to declare you want to store the memory you want to store so what is the data type you have to choose here for storing the memory because it's not a decimal value if it is decimal value you can use either float you can use or if you are after the, after the point after the decimal point you, are, you have a large number then you can use double you can use memory means nothing but maximum it, either it may be it may be a 5 to lmb of storage 5 to lmb of storage or it may be what 1 gb or 2 gb or 4 gb forget about this 5 to lmb let's say assume that only in GB, gbs 1 2 4 6 i have not seen 6 8 or 16 bit or 32 or 64 or 128 assume that these are the mobile storage uh, mobile storage i never seen any uh, device which is having more than 128 uh, gb storage in the mobile phones this is the storage capacity a minimum value is one a maximum value is 128 which data type we have to use here because we're having four types four types of numeric types are there if you remove if you remove these uh, two things long and uh, float and double per uh, decimal types of values remaining there are four things are there byte short int and long which one you have to choose here how we have to decide this one see byte will allocate how much space one byte how much one byte so one byte in the sense nothing but how many bits one byte means nothing but how many bits eight bits correct or not one byte means nothing but what eight bits so eight bits means nothing but let's take for example here we'll write two So 2 power 0, 2 power 1, 2 power 2, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, like that. So here. So total how much you will get? Index is going to start with 0. Index is going to start with what? 0. So if it is 8 bits means nothing but we have to configure 2 power 7. Because index is going to start with 0, index will be start. So 2 power 7. Correct or not? Index is going to start with zero. So if you remove, so eight bits means nothing but how much? Two power seven. Two power seven. Now observe here. Two power seven in the sense two into two into two. Correct or not? So, 10 times 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's take 7 times without this. Now, if you multiply this one, so index is going to start with 0. So, byte is going to be allocate how many how many bits? 8 bits will be allocated. 8 in the number. 8 in the sense something, but index is going to start with 0. We will not consider 0. So, 2 power 2 is how much? 4. Correct or not? 4 into 2, 8. 8 into 2, 16. 32. 64. 128. 128. Basically, basically, the byte range is nothing but any any type, any data type range is nothing but minus 2 power n2 minus 2 power Minus two power n, minus two power n to what? Two power so two power n to two power n minus one. Two power n to two power n minus one. This is the is a formula is what by applying this formula you can calculate the size you can calculate 
So 2 power n means how much we got? So here it's minus 2 power n, minus 2 power n to 2 power n minus 1. This is the formula. This is what? The formula. So how much you will get? You're going to get the range you are going to get minus 128 to what? Plus 127. Because 128 minus 1, right? How much you will get? 127. This is what the byte range is. This is what the byte range. If the values range, meaning you want to store some value you want to store. You want to store a value you want to store within the range of minus 128 to plus 127. You want to store a value you want to store within the range of minus 128 to plus 127. Then use a type called what? Byte type we choose. We choose a type called what? Byte type we had to choose. Like that we had to use, we had to compare what is the maximum value and minimum value for short, int, long and all. So based on that we had to check which, which data we had to use. Okay. Let's take assume that I'm using a, I want, I decided to use a byte type. So I specified byte I'm specifying here, byte, byte. I have not given any value, simply I configured as what is the memory, that's it. I configured byte I configured, I configured byte, meaning byte means nothing but it's going to allocate how many bits? Eight bits of space will be allocated in the stack frame. Where this eight bits of, eight bits of memory is going to be allocated? This eight bits of memory is going to be allocated in the stack frame, these eight bits of space will be allocated. In the stack frame, your JVM memory unit stack frame, the eight bits of space will be allocated here. Here it will allocate what? Eight bits of space. And we get a name we get for this eight bits of space. What is the name we configured? The name we configured for this eight bits of space we configured as memory is a name we configured. For this eight bits of space, we configured the name as what? Memory is a name we configured for this eight bits of space. But one rule is nothing but if you are creating a variable within the block, if you are creating a variable within the block, we call as local variable. We know that we have seen that. But one rule is nothing but okay for this memory location, we get a name we can. What is the name we configured? Memory is a name we configured. Let's save the program. Let's save the program and compile and run the program. Java C mobile.java and Java, maybe probably we have not saved, I guess. Just what I'm doing is the same like print of statement here, same like print of statement. So here we are using for printing a value, we use system dot out dot printl. System dot out dot printl and we have to write system dot out dot printl and I'm calling this memory I'm calling here. I'm calling what? Memory I'm calling system dot out dot printl and count I'm calling what memory intentionally only I have not given any value I have not specified for this memory. Let's save the program, compile and run the output. Let's see here. Java C mobile dot Java. See here, we got error. We got we got what error we got. See what is the error variable memory might not have been initialized. What is the error we got? Variable memory might not have been initialized. Meaning, what is the meaning of this statement? We written this program we written, we declared a byte type we declared, but we have not given any value we are not given for this byte. Directly we are printing the value we are printing without, without that we are printing that value we are printing here directly. Okay. Without giving any value, I'm printing the value I'm printing. So here, one important thing we have to observe, what is that important concept is nothing but local variables should be initialized. Okay. So you cannot make it empty. Local variables should be what? Local variables should be initialized. Local variables should be initialized. You cannot make you cannot make that empty. If you declare any variable, it's mandatory. We had to we had to initialize some value. You had to initialize that one definitely. And the next thing is nothing but for local variables, memory is going to be allocated in the stack frame. For local variables, for local variables, memory will be allocated. Memory will be allocated. Where the memory will be allocated? local variables memory will be allocated in 
start and start frame of and start frame of JVM memory unit. In JVM, in JVM one section is nothing but memory unit. In that memory unit, there is a uh, there is a unit called stack frame. There is a unit called stack frame. Inside that stack frame, it's going to allocate the memory for this local variables. So this is about the local variables. Uh, just work on up to this. And then the tomorrow's class, I mean tomorrow in the sense Monday. So weekends also I'll take the classes, but this is the first weekend, right? So we are expecting uh, some more people to come from Monday onwards. That's why uh, I'll take the class from Monday onwards. I'll take the class. Okay. Let's work on up to this. And uh, we, I, I went wrong. Huh? Minus 128 to plus 127. Yeah, yes, right. Minus 128 to plus 1. Yeah, let's work on up to this. And uh, in the Monday class, we'll discuss about this. What is instance variables? And what is a static variables? How to create the object? So these topics we'll discuss on the Monday class we'll discuss. Okay. So let me know if you have any queries in today's program. Of course, we are not written, still we have not started a green program. We are not started. These are the basic because a lot of people they don't know where the memory is allocating, what is in my variable and all. That's what I explained in the today's session. What is variable, where the memory is allocating and all. Okay. So no doubts, right? No queries. So thank you guys. Thank you. See you on Monday. We'll discuss instance and static variables. Thank you.